And welcome back to another daily devotion. I am Pastor Roy here at Woodlawn Christian Church in Lake City, Iowa. And this devotion is for Monday, February 12th of 2024. We are in the Gospel of Mark. We've been working our way through Mark for a while. We are in chapter 9. Today we arrive at chapter 9. We're going to look at the first eight verses today. Uh, this is a story of the Transfiguration. Uh, this is in all three of the Synoptic Gospels. It's an important story. It's in all three, and it's very nearly the same. Not much difference in any of the three. We just got done talking about that you're going to have to sacrifice to spread the word of Christ. You have to pick up your cross and follow them. You're not going to get some kind of bureaucracy uh, position in, in the kingdom to come. So let's jump in. and Let's look at these first eight verses, shall we? Verse 1 is a little bit different. We'll talk about that when we get done here. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God has come with power. And after six days Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were exceedingly afraid. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus alone. All right, and at the end there we have that theophany, that voice of God, the manifestation of God. A theophany is anytime you have a manifestation of God, whether it's visual, auditory, um, what have you. Um, here it's a auditory, it's the voice of God. You didn't, don't see God, though they do have a visual one because we have the cloud overshadowing them. That's a, that is still, still a theophany of God, too. I don't want to forget that. And, of course, God Jesus. He's a theophany, a manifestation in the flesh, as they say. So, but let's start off with verse 1. Peculiar verse, and he said to them, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God has come with power. Okay, and a lot of times we read that and we think, well, people have died, you know, the, Jesus hasn't come again. Uh, what's going on with that? Well, I think that verse follows right ahead of this story of the transfiguration in all of the Gospels, uh, the three synoptic Gospels. I think he's talking about some of you are going to still be here when we when when they see me coming in power, and that coming in power is him appearing with Elijah and Moses on the mountain, um, and so that is very much fulfilled. They were still there. Um, that is, they see the kingdom of God has come with power, Jesus' power, power, and the power of God. He has the the theophany of God's voice, the cloud, the whole thing. So that's what I think is going on there. You're free to disagree. Whatever. Um, they go up on the mountain, and we have this intent, you know, this you know, this pure, pure whiteness of his of his garments is transfigured into this purity. It's whiter than any fuller, and it could bleach. You know, no, no amount of bleach that you could use would get your garments as glistening white as Jesus is. Um, but he appears with Elijah and Moses, the the prophets and the law. So we have the Old Testament there is what we've got going on, representation of the prophets and the law, that's the Old Testament. And then we have Jesus, the New Testament. So we have the three pegs, if you will, of Scripture there, um, the, the law and the prophets and Jesus, the New Testament. Yeah, so that's what's the illustration that's going on there. Now, Peter and the others, uh, especially Peter, he says, let's make some, some tabernacles. Let's make you know, make, make up a structure. To move. We're going to stay. We're going to remain here. We, you know, we've seen this wonderful thing. And, um, and in life, a lot of times, something marvelous happens, something fantastic happens. And we just want, wish, we wish we could stay there. We wish we could, we could live there forever. But that's not how life is. And that's not how this is. Um, this is just a precursor, a glimpse of what's to come that these these disciples get get to take in, so that they see the promise of what's to come, um, and then it's gone. And once they, even then, once God's voice says to them, "Listen to Him," the instruction is to listen to Him. And what, of course, is Jesus going to tell them to do? Jesus is going to ultimately tell them to take the message to all the world. Um, listen to Him. Take the gospel to all the world. Um, we again, we, we tend to want to just stay there and, and reside in that place. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to just sit and reside in our faith and let our, our faith just sit there and, and be stationary, if you will. 
Uh, we're supposed to be active and take it out into the world. We're supposed to spread the gospel. We're not supposed to just sit there in, in a reclining manner, if you will. So that's what we've got in those in those eight verses. Let's pick up there tomorrow uh, with the coming of Elijah, and we'll go from there. Have a blessed day, and please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. If you enjoy these devotions, like and subscribe. Come back again. Feel free to share them. Have a blessed day. Be a blessing to someone today. Don't forget, God loves you. Bye-bye.